uh, the larger question that corporate India is also wanting to know is about growth. Uh, I have my colleague Diana Montero standing by. Uh, with the findings of the Bloomberg poll for uh, the GDP forecast for April June quarter that will be released on Friday, uh, Diana, what does what does that poll really indicate? Well, no improvement on uh, the growth front uh, is what uh, the poll is indicating. A poll of uh, close to 30 economists expect growth to be sub 5% for the third straight quarter. We're talking about a growth of 4.6% for the first quarter of uh, FY14. And in fact, if you compare it to the last year, same time period, it stood at 5.4%. At that point of time, we did think growth was weak, but we've fallen uh, a lot worse uh, since then. In fact, uh, compared to the previous quarter as well, which was 4.8%, you're seeing uh, the continued dip. So the third straight uh, quarter running, we're now moving at a below 5% growth. On one hand, you've had industrial production, which has contracted for the first quarter. On the other hand, you've had uh, services, which is not showing any kind of uh, respite. And uh, it's only agricultural growth, which is lead leading some amount of hope uh, because of the good monsoons, is because of which we're expecting uh, some amount of holding on to growth. Uh, we're expecting it to come in at a four-year low in terms of the quarterly number itself. In fact, a 17-quarter low is what we're talking about in terms of uh, the actual numbers. In fact, analysts across the board have gone ahead and cut their growth estimates for the full year. They're now talking about a growth of, come, of around 5.2 to 5%. For FY14, that means the entire year, we're talking about a growth of just around 5%. On one hand, you've also seen uh, the rupee co uh, contract quite sharply, close to 10% in the last one month. And because of which, uh, the central bank has gone gotten into a tightening measure, which has been hurting uh, growth on uh, on one hand. And on the, on the other hand, you've also had the investment cycle, which is not showing any kind of improvement. Thanks for putting that perspective, Diana. Dr. Kukin, this is the point, right? You know... The underlying growth, which whatever by whatever estimates, is looking bleak. And more importantly, you're not seeing the, any revival or any evidence of revival of the capital investment cycle. Uh, what do you think needs to be done for, for revival to take place uh, and for, for perhaps growth to push forward, at least in the next fiscal? Well, I think uh, when the measures of July 15th were taken, uh, it reflected, uh, obviously, a, a, a tactical choice, at least, uh, to switch focus from growth to exchange rate management. In the process, because it required liquidity tightening, the impact on interest rates was obviously anti-growth. Uh, the, the impact is essentially to, to reduce the incentive that banks have to uh, continue to, to provide credit. So this is a trade-off that was made, uh, recognizing that in order to achieve the objective of stabilizing the rupee, of course, we already, you know, there's a debate on whether that's happened or not, but that's a separate question. Uh, and in the process, you might actually end up sacrificing little growth. So exchange rate stability versus growth was the trade-off. Now, that trade-off is in play now. So to the extent that these policy responses are anti-growth or, or going to slow down growth, uh, one wouldn't expect that. Uh, that there would be any momentum in the growth process or any regaining of momentum in the growth process. That's, that's not logical. But there are two things I think we have to keep in mind. One is how do we handle the rupee issue because that directly impacts growth. And there I think the issue of containing the current account deficit is not going to happen overnight. I mean, nobody is expecting realistically that these are uh, things that can be done in a day and, you know, the impacts will start being felt in a month. Mm. These are long-term structural issues that we're talking about. Sure. But when you start correcting them, I think you set in motion a series of, uh, of positive forces mm. which will help to contribute, growth, uh, contribute to growth. And here, I think, two issues that I want to highlight. Mm. One is by, let, by gaining control of the currency, you are allowing monetary policy to push back to the growth inflation um, uh, balance. And there, I think, as inflation starts to, to stabilize, starts to, to moderate, you do have the opportunity to use interest rates to stimulate growth. On the other side, I think it's an issue of getting the investments back, and we are seeing some signs of uh, the, the cabinet coming in investment starting to push through on some large projects. Mm. I hope that that materializes. I hope that starts to translate onto, into money spent on the ground. Mm. Uh, that's one way, that's one factor that will help to contribute. Uh, but these are all part of a package uh, which uh, involve the, the rupee, uh, growth, and inflation. You cannot separate them. I don't think you can, you can have policies that focus on one uh, without really uh, considering all of the other factors.